But this is significant. This breaks this down by some, I mean, it could break it down by all states, but I've just shown you, um, I took this slide actually from Mark, thank you, uh, a subset of states. So you can see that the areas of great growth in high school graduates over the next day okay, is going to be in the southwest, and that take a look at the, the states in the north central and um, some of New England, Massachusetts, obviously, they're going down. And but we do recruit nationally, we do recruit internationally, the vast percentage of our students, or uh, that vast is too strong, a very sizable uh, proportion of our students come from the Northeast. So this is our total potential market. Now, I suppose on the one hand, you could rightly say that we are nowhere near penetrating the market even in this area. We have lots of things that we can do to better penetrate those markets. But I'm showing you this to show you that even without the, the economic problems, we have a demographic challenge that we have to meet with more national recruitment and deeper and more strategic recruitment efforts within every region. Okay. It's a lot of slides, forgive me. Um, you know, you, I, I could have showed you retention, that use that word to describe um, the persistence from the first to second year, which has for ever, not quite forever, but for a very long time, hovered around 80%. This shows you the six-year graduation rate, which is standard, and um, it bounces around a lot. It's perhaps not a surprise, given the relatively small graduating class, that it's easy to have fairly large percentual perturbations from year to year, given the fact that the numbers are all in the you know, 300 range. But it's, it's not a happy number. I guess you could call, you know, the high 60s to 70. Um, you know, that's that's the best we can claim our graduation rate. On. And now uh, the next slide, this is new since the, since the um, board meeting. This was an article, I don't know how many of you saw this in um, the New York Times two days ago about the issue of college completion. Um, Bill Bowen and Michael McPherson had just completed a study. Um, <clears throat> the issue of the degree to which students who start college or university completed um, is, is a big one. There are lots of things that are national about these issues. And I found, I found this chart, which we um, brought in, it's not exactly clear, but um, it's not too bad. Um, it, it shows you um, how selectivity drops. And if you, if you look at where we are in terms of six-year graduation rates, we're, we're basically right in, in this area. We're, um, we're we're not, where we're doing is, puts us with the third most selective, since our, you know, again, we, we don't rank every student, obviously, but, you know, we're, we're in this area. That, that's not, a, it's not the worst area to be in, but it, I don't think it's where we think of Hampshire as, as wanting to be or needing to be. So, just one more feature of why we're putting a lot more effort into focusing on retention, the Wabash committees, and the retention committee have done a lot of work. Um, Alan Goodman has highlighted the importance of retention in his letter, and a, a joint letter between uh, Dean Goodman and Dean Weisters. If it doesn't go out today, it will go out Monday, talking about more specific things that we're working together. Uh, all of us will be engaged in, in, in trying to reverse this. I've, to let you know, uh, I was so excited by the positive feedback of the first day for new students that I, you know, I, uh, I did a little cheerleading and um, said, you know, at this point, this group of students has had an incredibly positive experience of Hampshire. Um, maybe this is the moment we could actually change the equation for the retention of this class and then build on that. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a lot of cheerleading about this because if we have for a year or more another drop or at least no improvement in the number of incoming students, obviously um, we could be greatly benefited if we retain 
significantly more continuing students. And looking a couple of years down the line, because you, nothing you do today, oh, I won't say that, is what you do today in some of our recruitment efforts won't fully pay off for a year or two down the line. So we've got to, we've got to face the challenges that next year's admissions and uh, first year class is going to still, um, it's going to still show signs of what we had done until recently, um, and, and we can't get all the improvement in one year. It's incredibly important that we improve retention as fast as possible for the financial equation. Let's go on. Um, so just, I, I've, I've taken these from the draft I've seen of the, of the joint letter from uh, Dean Goodman and, and, and Dean Weisler, um, that there's a lot of focus on advising. Um, we, we know from the retention committee's work that um, a great co-factor for retention of first-year students is the number of courses that first-year students complete in either term and in both terms, so we're going to pay a lot of attention to that, see if we can, we can um, find out what's going on, if it looks like someone's in trouble. Um, among the, and I don't want to go over all these details, but you can just see some of the very specific things of, of actually make, doing what we can to um, respond to any perceived needs in writing that's so important in Hampshire. Um, more intentionality in, in sharing best practices on advising, um, model concentrations, um, just to give people more of a sense of structure of how to build their pathways, um, do everything we can to make sure that there's yet more face time. Next slide. Evaluation, I talked about the narrative evaluation before, but the retention committee and uh, even as it works in implementation with CASA um, is aware that um, Lots of aspects of evaluation in the broadest sense um, impact on students' um, sense of progress or their sense that, they're, that even the difficulties are being addressed, which is so important for their wanting to remain here. Um, not all of these will happen all at once, I, I suspect, but um, these are ideas that we're trying to, to work with, pilot some, experiment with others to see how quickly we can um, help students, and we're responding very much to all the data and analysis we have of students who have left and what they've told us, to see if we can overall change how we're going to um, um, see our second, third, and fourth year classes. Uh, and, and just looking beyond this, um, the deans I know are looking at the you know, more systemic attention to course availability, uh, this idea of we all want this greater sense of academic community, could we make connections between the academic and the social realm, and um, the board, particularly via the academic uh, affairs and the enrollment committees, uh, they're very concerned to be um, updated and let us know how we're doing on retention because it's one of the things that they see is so important. and. Um, their concerns for the college involve the numbers, and it also involves the quality of the of the whole academic experience. And I thought I would give you some good news: is that one of the things that the retention committee um, highlighted was that you know, we have to we have to celebrate the, the the great good teaching and advising that goes on here, and and you know help people focus on the fact that. Uh, not everyone, you know, that takes a lot of skill and um, persistence to be really good and recognized by students as good. And so uh, a, a, an alum and a former board member uh, was very intrigued by this notion and has funded, we'll soon announce in particulars, um, very nice prizes for teaching and advising. Now, um, oh, I missed. Can you do it again? Good news, bad news. Um, this is way too much for me to present or you to take in, but um, I know there'll be questions that will want to come around to it. Um, since the spring, as you, as you know, we budget 
we develop budgets, you know,